Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanna go over some of the trends for 2023 that I would avoid. Whenever I'm curating my closet and my personal style, I like to incorporate trends in a very mindful way. And I like to use it as an opportunity to add something to my closet that I can find really easily, but that I can also enjoy and wear for many years. So it's not just a blip on the radar, but rather something that I can use to really enhance my style. So today's video, video is with that type of thinking in mind. I've gone through the trends that I'm seeing pop up a lot and I've isolated those that I don't think will be the easiest to transcend time and mix and match for years into the future. So let's get started. So the first 2023 trend that I would personally avoid is denim maxi skirts. Now the nature of trends in general and especially all of the great style inspiration that we have now with Pinterest and Instagram is that someone somewhere is probably going to style something in a way that makes you do a second guess and maybe double take and start thinking that you could bring that into your closet. But I think that when it comes to a denim maxi skirt and ultimately finding a trend that doesn't have longevity, you need to consider not only what you can wear it with, but how you can pair that with different shoes and different bags and different tops across many seasons. And this one in particular, I think gets a little tricky when you start doing that. I think in isolation, there are a few things that look so great with a denim maxi skirt, but when you really start thinking about mixing and matching, it becomes a little bit hard. The fact that it's so much denim and denim in and of itself can read a little bit casual and then it's a thicker material it just makes it not the best when it comes to versatility so with the idea of longevity in mind this is one that i would personally skip Another 2023 trend that I would personally skip is the micro minis that only look good when you're standing and that you can't really sit down in. So these again are looking so great in so many different outfits and a lot of really stylish people are wearing them and they look so great when they're standing still. But when you think about functionality for your closet and things that you'll wanna reach for on a Tuesday, a tiny, tiny micro mini really doesn't have that flexibility. And for me personally, when they're a certain length, they're okay to wear but then past that they become really hard to sit in and really difficult I feel like I'm fidgeting and fixing and it takes the fun out of wearing something and getting dressed so I end up avoiding those pieces so now I've figured out the perfect length for me something that's short but not too short so that I can sit down and not feel like I can't bend over and pick things up and finding that sweet spot has allowed me to incorporate skirts that are mini skirts but not in a way that's not practical for everyday life. So this is definitely one I would think twice about. If you are seeing all of them looking great and you're over the long skirt trend, going shorter is definitely a good option, but keep it within something you can actually sit down in. So when you're trying it on in the dressing room, do a sit test. Kneel down, squat down, and make sure that you're not feeling a lot of breeze in the back and a lot of air conditioning, because if that's the case, it's probably going to be something you may not reach for as often as you'd like. Another 2023 trend that I would avoid is those teeny tiny little bags that don't really hold anything. This again circles back to functionality and practicality and how often you can realistically use something. Because so many of these little bags, they're so cute and they look really great, but they are strictly accessories. They become almost like a necklace or a belt at that point because you can't hold anything in them. So especially when you start increasing the price on those and paying into like designer prices, I would would pass because for that type of money you could spend that on a handbag you can use and a purse that you can wear for a lot of different occasions actually hold things in and be able to use practically every single day and really build out your wardrobe in a way that allows you to use it so you don't just have a closet full of beautiful things that just sit there but instead you have beautiful things that can enhance your life and allow you to feel great as you're actually living it so on the other end of the spectrum another 2023 trend that I would avoid is those enormous bags, the ones that look like you could live inside of them. This is one that I would avoid just because of functionality again and finding something that you'll want to wear a lot, but then also finding something that won't hurt your back. I remember when this was popular a couple years ago, I had a really big bag and I would carry my whole life in it. I'd put my laptop and everything that I needed for work and I would bring a change of clothes and all of that for events that I had. And what ended up happening is I was noticing that not only did my back start 
start to hurt, but I was kind of tilting a little bit. So I would look in the mirror and I'd be standing straight, but I was actually kind of lopsided. And I really think that came down to having such an imbalance of weight on just one side. So otherwise, I would recommend finding something that's a little bit of the medium size. You can still fit things in it and it's going to be functional and practical, but I also think that going for something that's like a top handle is a little bit better because then it's not weight directly on your shoulder or finding like a backpack style, something that's going to distribute it a little bit better. But do this by thinking honestly to yourself, if I were to turn while wearing this bag, would I take out two or three people around me? If that's the case, you could probably afford to go down a little bit in size in order to find something that you can wear and actually use without feeling completely drowned by your bag. The next 2023 trend that I would avoid is clear bags and clear shoes. The clear bags I think are a good option to pass on because you can see everything inside of them and that makes it not the best when you're walking around. You don't want it to be easy to see things that you're carrying just in case you are traveling with your accessories that are a little bit expensive or maybe you've got like um, technology in there and anything that could maybe be easy to kind of slip out, especially if it's easy to see. And then the other thing is clear shoes. And this comes down to the fact that the material of a clear shoe tends to be something that's not that breathable or that comfortable to wear and it doesn't mold to your foot that well. So it tends to be really, really uncomfortable and can lead to something that you just pass on, especially when it makes your feet nice and sweaty. It sounds so gross, but it's really something to consider when it comes to the clear shoes because if you're wearing something that causes your feet to feel really really warm that's going to be a suffocating feeling it's going to be uncomfortable and it comes back to the main theme of all of these in wanting something that you can wear comfortably and be able to have positive associations with so that when you go look in your closet and you go to reach for it you don't have negative memories and instead it's something that you want to wear and then the last 2023 trend that i would avoid is over the top mode so this is a trend that we're seeing a lot. It's also kind of classic because especially like a moto style jacket never really goes out of fashion. But right now, because it is more popular, we're seeing a lot of interpretations and some of them are very extreme. And anytime you go really extreme, I think you limit the versatility of that item within your wardrobe and also make it a little bit more resistant to feeling trendy. So when you're thinking about a moto jacket or like a pair of moto boots, for example, if you're looking at two options and you've got one that has maybe really oversized shoulders and a lot of buckles and a lot of details, a lot of zips on it, and then one next to it that maybe has minimal shoulders, uh, kind of a more sleek silhouette overall, and then fewer details, so maybe one or two buckles and a couple zips, I would recommend going for the one that's got less. And anytime you do that, I think you incorporate the energy of that piece into your wardrobe, but do so in a way that allows it to be very versatile. That way, when you're putting it on, it's not saying the whole part of your outfit and it's not screaming a little bit too loudly in order to mix and match. So I hope that these are helpful for you. And as you're building out your wardrobe and you're looking to incorporate trends, having this type of critical thinking when it comes to what's going to be um, the most versatile can allow you to do so in a way that's not wasteful and instead gives you the opportunity to really be current with your style, but also incorporate things that are uniquely you so that maybe 20 years from now you can say oh I got this 20 years ago and the cycle the trend has cycled back and it's still current now just as it was then so I hope that you like this and like always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one have a great day